So this morning I'm going to be spreading fertilizer on some of my hay pastures and the fertilizer cart that the co-op dropped off has the PTO at 540 and on my 61 and 25 I currently have the 1000 PTO so I'm going to show you how I switch it from the 1000 to the 540. Alright so we're behind the 6125. Here is um, the PTO shaft. Right now it's got a thousand. We're going to use these pliers to go ahead and clamp down on the C-clamps or the little retaining pins that's holding this PTO shaft in there and it'll kind of just slide right out and then you can quickly just ref or quickly just flip it. So pretty easy. The C-clips right there just use the pliers this is the thousand the smaller grooves so then I'm gonna swap this slide it on this one on the flat part and then I can go ahead and clamp down slide it back in Okay, it's not sliding in nicely. There. Got that done. Now that I have that switched around and my iPhone is mounted here on the gooseneck of my livestock trailer, I'm going to record a few Instagram reels just because the lighting is really, really good. So now that we got a little bit of social media content done, we can actually get to farming and spreading this fertilizer. The hay fields that I'm about to be spreading fertilizer on are actually going to be the first time I'm putting these into production. In the past, I've kind of hired out my hay cutting and baling and then this year I'm going to attempt to do it myself. Right now I've been going to a lot of auctions trying to pick up some old um, baling equipment and I really am hoping to do square bales this year just because I have a lot of horses and it would make my life a lot easier if I was not having to <laughs> hunt down hay bales on Facebook Marketplace, especially if we have a drought like we did last year. So. Operation Midwest Emma Hay Company. This is day one, starting with spreading fertilizer. So let's get at it.
fun fact, they actually hate PTOs. So standing in one of my hay fields now, this is one of the hay fields that I had a soil sample done on this previous fall. The soil sample seemed pretty balanced as far as a hay field um, goes, but of course grass needs a little bit of nitrogen. So today I'm gonna be spreading AMS. So in this cart, there is a dry um, fertilizer called AMS, what it looks like. AMS is pretty much activated by water, so we have um, rain coming in the forecast. So today was a pretty good day to put down some dry fertilizer. The grass that I'm going to be growing is going to be for my horses, so it doesn't have to be um, ready for row crops or nothing. But the sulfur is going to help stabilize the nitrogen and it's pretty key for helping the grass grow. And so I'm going to show you how the cart works. So the PTO that I hooked up earlier kind of drives this spinner. Spins continuously while I have the PTO engaged. The co-op kind of did the calculations for me. So I just run my PTO at 1800 RPM and then go about four and a half miles per hour and it puts down 150 pounds of the AMS per acre which will kind of hit my goal for my nitrogen and while the spinner is going this little wheel it drops down onto the bigger wheel um, and activates this conveyor belt the conveyor belt is what the AMS um, pellets are sitting on and that's kind of what flings it out and spreads it. I think my swath is 50 feet. And so I'm kind of doing passes that are like 48 feet, just so there's a little bit of overlap and room for human air. And so let's get spreading this fertilizer. <laughs> the tarp up real quick to let just a smoother flow of the fertilizer. Okay, before I get going spreading this fertilizer I'm going to adjust my hydraulics. The last time I was using this tractor was for spreading the manure so my hydraulic one has to be altered a little. First I'm going to increase the speed to like two and then I'm going to decrease the cycle down to three seconds and then now that that's set we're gonna come over to green star go to gs3 i'm gonna go to my implement and i'm gonna change the width of my implement um, since my swath is 50 feet i'm gonna type in 48 for my implement width and then I'm going to go down to my tracking, track spacing, and I'm going to do 48.0 accept. Boom. And now I am kind of parked about 25 feet off of the fence line, and I'm ready to get this pasture going. All right, going to engage the PTO. Going to climb my RPMs up to 1800 and then kick 
on my hydraulic. Wait three seconds. And then snap it forward. And we're off. So I'm gonna do the perimeter and I'm just gonna keep about a 25 foot distance from my fence line. And then um, I have it on adaptive curve. So basically after my first pass, the tractor will drive itself. And look behind me, I can see um, the pellets flying. People wonder how I'm able to record Instagram reels and TikToks while I'm driving a tractor and so my big camera was on a tripod there and then my little camera is a phone mount that I attach a different mount to and I'm able to record myself driving. Well, since I'm done spreading fertilizer, I need to work out, go to an eye doctor appointment, and then go ride some of my horses. The reason that um, I'm probably gonna work out now, even though I hate, hate, hate working out in the middle of the day, is because after horseback riding lessons, I do not have the energy or desire to go work out, especially since I do work out in my home gym. My home gym that I have here in my barn once it gets dark it's freezing cold and although i do have a diesel heater something about the daylight just motivates me to work out so we're going to chug the salani change into some workout clothes and then go hit a quick i don't know what i'm gonna hit today i could either hit shoulders or legs so we'll kind of see what i feel like after a warm-up and then after that i have an eye doctor appointment I've really been debating getting LASIK instead of dealing with contacts. I've had contacts since I was in middle school and I hate them. Um, I used to have the ones you could wear for like two weeks and then I started getting ulcers on my eye and now I'm wearing dailies and by the end of the day, they're super dry and hard. And so if you've ever had LASIK, let me know what you think about it. I'm a little nervous to consider that just because of the whole idea of surgery on my eyes i'm terrified of losing my eyesight so i don't know i know statistically i probably will not lose my eyesight but the fear of it kind of has kept me wearing contacts for the last several years but i think <sighs> maybe when i turn 30 i will take the leap and just go see if i have a candidate for lasik eye surgery I feel like, oh, I feel like it's stuck on my legs. It's gotta like hike them up so that way that like little booty scrunch positions right under the cheek so that way it kind of gives like, you know, that lifting effect. Oh, I think that looks cute with this top too. Got the infrared sauna turned on, warming up. It's like 35 degrees outside, so warming up in the sauna definitely, I don't know, puts me in a better mood to do a good um, lift. And then also I've been doing the infrared sauna just for the health benefits. And it's a really great place to kind of do my stretching and warm ups before I actually go into lift or recovery afterwards and just kind of for relaxing. So right now I'm going to be hitting shoulders, like I said. And so um, to warm my shoulders up, I use 
um, either a tennis ball or something and do a couple different shoulder warm-ups that I've learned from Pilates. Mm -hmm.